Hey y'all, it's Nikea, Jasmine, and it's Black Girl Liz. Black Girl Liz. So last video, I think we said it like 50. <laughs> I think we said it like 50 sometimes. I don't know, but just know that Black girls are lit with literature. Black girls read lit literature, and being a Black girl is lit forever lit. Mm -hmm. okay. Our outfits today are like college theme. College theme. She has a fictional college. This is a real college. <laughs> this is real to me. If it was EJ, okay. he would say it's real. This is. This is real. Well, hers is a fictional, historically black college, and mine's is a real PWI. I went to Longwood. L U. I went to Hillman. I ain't yeah. one of the Cosby's. I ain't go to Hill, man. I, I went to Hill, man. <laughs> you know. And so. um, in honor of today's book, we're drinking a premix Jose Cuervo Margarita. Judge your mother. No, we didn't make these. Judge your mother. We ain't got time for that. We got real jobs and lives and stuff. Right. And I will like to say, even though we are drinking margaritas, we do understand that the characters are Puerto Rican. Um, so I'm not saying that all Hispanics are similar. It's just what they had at the liquor store that was pre-mixed and I felt kind of went with the theme. And I'm guessing she's enjoying it because it is quite tasty. Like a Jolly Rancher. Right? It's like, gonna it be good. smells like straight alcohol. But it's so tasty. Yes. I know. I mix a little bit of the lime. So we got oh, watermelon and we got lime. I mix a little bit she in there. She didn't tell me she mixed the lime. <laughs> Cause I'm she got a little, it. a little mark tequila spritzer. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All right. So we told y'all last time what book we were reading. I think we read this in a few days. It is so small. Probably like 200 and some pages. Mm -hmm. um, the Education of Marco Sanchez by Lilium Rivera. Last time I said Lillian, I was tipsy off the uh, hippie bird. But yeah. Oh yeah. That was Jazz's fault. But this is our novel. Again, it's still young adult literature because I'm obsessed with young adult. This was, this was like, <laughs> this book is like both of our choices because like when I first presented this idea to Jazz, it was just a list of, a list of books that I had and mm -hmm. she chose this book. Mm -hmm. This is actually supposed to be our first one, but I told y'all I'm kicking it old school. So I had to wait for the library. <laughs> So you know libraries have systems. So the Greensboro <laughs> Library System, I went to the main library, the central mm. library, and they didn't have it, so they had to get it from somewhere else. One of the other libraries. McGrick Horton Library Branch. So yeah, and then they didn't notify me the first time when it came in. So I had to go back and put it on hold again so that I could get it. And it took a yeah. lot to get this book. And yeah. the question is, was it worth it all? We'll discuss that yeah, later. We'll discuss Spoiler we'll, alert. We'll, we'll get into that. I think we need to start saying that. All our all of our reviews are spoiler alert. Spoiler alert, black alert, <laughs> spoiler alert. Like I mean spoil. Cause don't yeah. watch this if you don't want to know what the book right. is about. If you have not read this book yet, don't hey. watch this video. Right, but still watch the if video. If you want to read it. You know? Just yeah. watch it. But so, anyway, so, so I am um, I got a little bit of her bio. Oh, okay, cool. So she um, is originally from the Bronx, which the book actually takes place in the Bronx. Um, she now lives in Los Angeles with her family. She's a really, really small bio. Uh, she's a freelance worker, writer, excuse me, um, and has done work with Ten House, the LA Times, Latina Magazine, among others. Um, and I believe this was her first book. Yes, this is her first novel. Her second one's actually coming out March 5th. Okay. The same time as uh, Don Everlasting Hill. Rose, yeah, mm -hmm. for uh, the Bell yeah. sequel. We'll okay. see if we'll get her second book. Mm, we'll see after this video. Yeah. All right. Um. So that's her bio. I'll insert a picture of her. She's cute. She's I mean, cute. And she is Puerto Rican. Puerto Rican. Yes. She's Puerto Shout Rican. out to you, girl. Boricua, Boricua. <laughs> I just like <laughs> Okay. So Jazz is good at giving the book synopsis. So I'm gonna let her do that, and I'm going to drink okay. my drink. Drink her drink. All right. So the book is about Margot Sanchez. Um, who is a 17, 16. She's yeah, a, I think she's younger. I don't know, she's in high school. Um, student, she goes to private school, predominantly white private school. Um, that I think her, she's a freshman. Freshman? Yeah, because uh, they would have mentioned like a quince or something. Either she, and then like her friend didn't get into the school. Oh, uh, that's true. So either way, she's in high school. She goes to a predominantly white private high school, preparatory school called Somerset. Um, her family owns a chain of grocery stores, and the they own two. <laughs> a chain, more than one, is a chain. You got two links in this chain. <laughs> it's a chain. They own a chain. Oh, let Margo tell you she will call it a chain of grocery stores. It's all about description. Oh uh, so uh, the story starts off because Margo is forced to do as punishment and work at one of the grocery stores, the first one, um, because she stole money from her parents to go buy some clothes because she was trying to flex on a gram with her her 
Caucasian friends. They was to white. To, to keep up ain't with. Ain't no place called Caucasia. <laughs> Trying so to you keep. ain't Caucasian. You white. <laughs> I'm sorry, excuse me. Uh, she was trying to keep up with her white friends, Camille and Serena, and to do that, she stole her daddy's credit card. They don't even sound white. Those are black names. Camille and Serena? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Serena Williams. Nobody thinking of white Well, I think when I heard of Serena, I thought of Serena Barrender Woodson from Gossip Girl, but Jazz is white. Just a little bit. <laughs> According to Ancestry, 9%. <laughs> Okay, let me shut um, I'm yeah, so she, uh, you know, was trying to fit in with her friends, so she stole some money, so she's forced to work at the grocery store. And the book is basically about her trying to make it through the summer working at this grocery store. And she, her light at the end of the tunnel is this big party in the Hamptons at this boy named Nick's house and how she's just really trying to just make it to the party because she feels like this is going to be her coming out type of event within the social status and social rankings of her school and, and the culture and stuff. Um, and it just kind of going through like her interactions and how her family is going through different things uh, during the the summer that Margot spends. Uh, during this time, she also meets a boy, Moses. Is that how you read his name? I now? said Moises. Moises. But that sounded Jewish. It does. But it looks like Moises. I said Mo Moses. I don't know. But Moises. it's M O I S E S. Yeah. So pronunciation I'm not I'm sure ask Google. uh so while you finish this enough. uh yeah so she meets this boy who is an activist power to the people trying to do right within the community brown lives um, matter brown lives matter right <laughs> trying to save a, a neighborhood and stuff like that and she's just trying to figure out herself and go through getting through the summer at the super at the supermarket I was about to say Superstore, shout out to Superstore, that is actually a really funny show. Um, do the supermarket as well as deal with Moises, know. Moses, whatever his name is. Oh, maybe it is Moses. It's a, uh, maybe it's like the, um, oh, it's a Spanish spelling of Moses. Okay, Spanish spelling of Moses. Oh. All right, so um, that's the quick synopsis. So I guess now we'll get into some reactions. So what were your initial reactions to the book? Oh my God. Um, so I'll put, this is what I put. I said, um, She's so obsessed with pleasing her two white friends. Yeah. That's things I noticed. Mm -hmm. She's trying to assimilate into the culture at Somerset. Um, because I mentioned like she doesn't wear her hair curly. And as you can see by the cover of the book, she has curly hair. Yep. She straightens it. Like straightens daily, the crap she out said. of it. Straight um, daily. She lies to people and wants to fit in. Mm -hmm. Um, while I was first reading the book, it was like I don't know why all the books start off like this. This is blah. Yeah. It was like really blah mm -hmm. it had some moments but i was like because it starts with her already having spent the money and mm -hmm. i think is she telling the story is it from her point of view yes yes it's so first person, person. Yeah, yeah her perspective so it was just like oh i'm listening to this teenage girl tell this story and she just she's oh. very vapid she's very very um and then she has this thing with shallow lips. yeah like she writes random, li I'm her, like, her lists are extremely random, things I hate. And then she'll put out things, people I need to talk to. Like what Things are annoying my mood today. Well, oh, I had a question, but it was answered by the book, so I'm not even gonna ask, cause you know, Jazz always has questions. Oh, I don't, actually this time I don't have any questions. What? I know, right? I think I just, this book, this book just got straight to the point. So like, for me, like my reaction, so I agree. I felt like she needed constant validation from her friends, Camille and Serena, who were like the popular white girls at the school that she's trying to click up with and who are basically, she feels like molding her into who she needs know, to be at the school. Because um, apparently her old best friend uh, was supposed to come to the school with her, Elizabeth. but Elizabeth didn't get into Somerset. So um, she had to kind of go into it by herself. And when she got there, she met Camille and Serena and she's just trying to move up in the social rankings with these people. So I feel like she was kind of caught up between who she is, who she thinks she should be based on what her family tells her, um, who she used to be based on like her hanging out with Elizabeth and who she thinks she wants to be based on like her friends, the white friends or whatever. I feel like she's really conflicted. Like she's constantly struggling with like, my family wants me to be the best thing that ever happened for the family. Right. I think I need to be, you know, for me to be successful in life, I need to hang out with Camille and Serena. Um, I used to be this really cool, somewhat, she called it weird girl that used to hang out with Elizabeth. And I don't think she really has any clue as to who she really is and what right. really truly makes her happy. Right. And her family has, has a nickname for her. They call her Princesa, Princesa. Mm. So mm -hmm. like she's supposed to be the princess and like her dad always like totes her in front of people like, oh, princess is gonna be a 
a lawyer. She's gonna be a doctor. And like everybody in the neighborhood calls her princess, and nobody calls her Margot. Yep. Only her friends at Somerset and Moses. And I think another reaction was I. She like kind of like thought that like all her friends cared about her, like Camille and Serena. I don't think they really cared about her. She thought they they did, but they didn't. Uh, and that was really evident throughout the story and the way that she interacts with them. I, like even in the beginning of the story, it was like I think her first day, she was like blowing up her friends, Camille and Serena. What are you oh guys doing? God. What are you guys doing? What are you guys doing? Because she was having really bad FOMO, which I can kind of understand. But at the same time, they girl, they are not reaching back out to you. They don't care about what you're doing this summer. Yeah. They're gonna go live their lives on the beach in the Hamptons. Like they're not but your real yes. friends. Uh -huh. Sorry. I never like. I never struggled with that in high school or had that major issue. I, mean, I didn't have FOMO. I have FOMO now that I'm older because I can do more stuff. But <laughs> I knew my mom wasn't letting me do nothing. So. Right. And it wasn't even like bad and FOMO. Like I just knew who my friends were. Like right. there were parties and stuff, but I didn't go. And I didn't care about going. I didn't feel like I missed out because those were not the people I wanted to be around in the right. first place. So See, another thing I wrote down, I probably wrote this in the wrong section. But um, like her dad, to me, he seemed like he doesn't believe in showing pride in his home country, and he's more focused on assimilation. Because mm -hmm. he, there was a part where she mentioned like people had bumper stickers or flags hanging from their um, rearview mirror and like bumper stickers of their car to represent their different countries because she lives in a predominantly Latin community in the Bronx, and um, she was like her dad didn't like that. So I just thought that was really. Mm -hmm. Really weird, and then she, she was kind of a reflection of her dad. She was, and like they also assimilated. made a comment in the book about um, she talked about how if you know if you were darker skin, it was okay. kind of a problem, mm -hmm. um, it was bad luck. But if you were lighter skin, then you were blessed um, yeah. within their, their community, which yeah. is something that we see often in colorism, not just in the Latina community, but also within the black community. Is a, a huge mm -hmm. thing about colorism and how we, and also like in the Indian community too, right. like any. Yeah community that has a shade range yeah there's colorism yep and I just thought that was very interesting because I really you know I'm in a part of the african-american community you know mm, no. so <laughs> black girl lit so I always think of it like just in the black community but you know I often honestly just forget about you know there's other people of color mm -hmm. you know out there that deal with the same thing like I had a a Spanish teacher in high school who was from the Dominican Republic and she looked white no. Like legit white. And then there's people from the Dominican Republic that are dark. Yeah. So it's just like, you know, black people, our skin ranges go from the palest of pale to that beautiful blue black that you see on some people. So, but it's just crazy that within our own community that we have issues with, you know, those who are different skin tones, which it, it shouldn't be a problem. But, you know, I grew up, I used to want to be light skinned. Aww. I did. I'm sorry. So well, I thought light people were pretty. pretty. You he did make me feel light skinned. Cause he always says, I'm. Oh, I was supposed to say, does that mean he makes you feel pretty? I thought that's no, what you were no, 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 no. <laughs> I mean, he does make me feel pretty because we have different complexions. Like EJ, to me, he's not super dark. We yeah, need dark no. skin. He is darker I, than you. When I stand next to him, I'll be like, dang, babe, I look real yellow. He's like, yeah, because you light skin. <laughs> but I want to be darker. I like going out. Like me and my friends used to go tan, like by the pool. And okay. Like I like it in my summer shade. I don't like my winter shade. Yeah, I like I do like my summer my yeah. summer shade too. Let me go on some trips. Right, tripping. Um, but back to the book. So that's kind of basic reactions. The book, like yeah. I said, was really straightforward, really easy to read. Mm -hmm. Um, so in terms of major scenes, yeah. um, I think for me the biggest scene. So there's a girl that works at the grocery store. Um, <laughs> her name is Jasmine. her name is Jasmine with an S. <laughs> We is not the same. She got an S. Okay. She got that basic spelling. Just kidding. That is a beautiful spelling of Jasmine. Um, so she uh yeah, let's try to be she worked at the, <laughs> she works at the store and she described as your gum popping, hoop wearing, heel, you know, your stereotypical what she would think of like a Latino lady in the cousin. Oh. Like I would envision but kind of like like a Cardi B kind of thing. Like I guess you could say not that like Cardi B is like Jasmine because Cardi is way better Don't than Jasmine. Talk about Cardi like but that. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So Jasmine works at the store, and I guess at first it seems like Jasmine's trying to befri befriend Margot, but then not really, because she talks down to her. She's kind of rude and abrasive. But then, come to find out, Jasmine's pregnant, right? But who the baby daddy? Margot daddy! Yeah. Right! Bruh. So that Margot daddy out here having an affair with Jasmine. But Jasmine low-key told Margot. She did. Because Jasmine took 
Margot to lunch one day on their yeah. lunch break. They went to this pizza shop mm -hmm. and she was like, oh, your daddy, be, your poppy works all those late hours. He could be effing anybody in this store. And then her, Margot was like, Poppy wouldn't do that. Everybody, this person is too old. And then Jasmine said like, oh, he could be effing me for all you know. I was like, for all you know. And I, and I was on Margot's side. I was like, girl, all shut you up. Cause know. you dumb. You young and dumb. But, and the way that the story is set and the way that Margot tells it. So you think that uh, Margot has a brother named Junior. And from what it looks out, and he's described as a philanderer. He's kissing on all the girls in the store. Cashrista. Cash 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 like barista. Cashrista. I'm going to get some um, Jose. Oh, yes, please. Refill me up. Uh, anyways, so her brother Junior also works at the store. He's a philanderer, kissing on all the girls, flirting with them. Um, getting into like, you know, getting some from them. So the way the story is described, you think that Jasmine is messing with Junior and then when Jasmine tells um, Margo that she's pregnant, you immediately think, oh, Junior's the baby daddy. No, it's Margo got dang on daddy, Poppy. Yeah, I Poppy didn't think was it, out here knocking the tail. I didn't think it was And then the way that they found out is because Margo had to run to the store because Somebody was stealing money from the grocery store. It turned out to be Junior was stealing money. He from had the a whole trunk full of cash, cash and, and cocaine. Cocaina. Stop! He was on that narcotics. <laughs> on that Miley Cyrus. Hey. Uh, so he was on that narcotic, right? So she running up to the stores to go tell her daddy, oh daddy, 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 you know, the person that stole the money was actually, you know, Junior, not the person you think it is. Awesome. And when she run up on there, she see daddy in the car with Jasmine kissing and stuff. So she was like, oh my God. And I was like, oh my God, Margo, your daddy nasty. I like, I was, re I just finished the book last night because, pause. Jazz did it again, talking about some. Back at the oh, end. Oh, I'm right not even halfway done yet, and I'm like, I oh, I only it. got a hundred pages. Then she texted me last night, talking about some. <laughs> I finished the book. So I had to hurry up and finish my last eighty pages last night. Look, my bad. Let's, let's see if you got the context. I read while I'm at work. So. I said all of that to say. <laughs> That I was reading last night and I got to that part and I was like, no! I was really sitting on the couch <laughs> kicking and screaming because before I had read that part, I actually wrote down in my notes, is Jasmine having an affair with Poppy? Oh! Is she pregnant by him? Oh! And boom, there it goes. Um, let's see some of my major scenes. Oh, I don't know if I have major scenes, but just like some things that stood out to me, like what's up with Margot's mother? Oh my god. I felt like once she was being manipulated and controlled and abused by her husband. She like, was. Yep. She was. So Marco's mom is kind of described as this woman who is dressed up every day, wearing heels every day. Housewife. Um, clean, housewife cleaning up, taking care of the house, taking care of the kids. Um, and it seems like she doesn't really have a voice. So when she's like talking to Margo or Margo's talking or things come up um, within the household, the mom just kind of is like, she tries to fight for it, but uh, she goes and falls in deaf ears. But now that she finds out the end of the book that the father's having a fair, it kind of makes sense. She just seems like, the mom just seems like a really sad character. Like she just seems really sad and broken up the entire time. And I felt kind of bad for the mom. I know, I did too, like, sorry, I'm trying to deal with Harper. Mom life. Um, but the mom, I just, she was just so weird. Like, she's in all these clubs and does all mm -hmm. this stuff. And, like, you can tell, <clears throat> I got suspicious that Jasmine was sleeping with Poppy when um, the mom came to the store. Oh, yes. And was treating mom Jasmine up. like trash. She popped up and at it. Yeah. And then when Margo found out, she came back home and was like trying to tell her mom and her mom didn't talk about it. And I'm like, mm -hmm. lady, you are just abusive. And the way he talked to her, oh, they, they and the way they really dealt bad. with each other. It was just, really tumultuous yeah. and um, I liked Poppy at first. Hard though. relationship. I did too. Um, but then, because at first I thought Poppy was just a, you know, a man trying to run his business, take care of his family. And then his daughter had done something bad. His daughter had essentially stolen money from her. Right. And He's just trying to punish her and teach her and help her grow and learn from this experience. But then you find out that he's an extremely flawed person. Everyone in the family is, is very, very flawed. Yeah, um, they come off as this like picture perfect family. And then I didn't realize until the end, but she was in a pretty well off family. Mm -hmm. Like every year for her birthday, she got a Tiffany's piece of jewelry. Yeah. And she, but she, the way she describes it is she's completely poor and she lives in the Bronx and we're not well to do. And she's constantly comparing herself to her white counterparts at Somerset. And I'm like, boo, you 
you need to look in the mirror and appreciate what you have. Mm -hmm. um, and then throughout the book, so in terms of like her romantic life, so she's got Moses, who's the activist, who's like outside of the store protesting and trying to prevent um, one of the community projects from being turned gentrified. Gentrified, basically. So she meets him during that, you know, while he's outside campaigning. But she also is trying to spend her entire summer counting down to when she can go to this party in the Hamptons with this yeah. boy named Nick white boy of course because she's all dreamy eyed about Nick who plays soccer who's the best looking boy at the school who has a big beach house in the Hamptons oh my god Nick Nick A H Nick A H that works <laughs> you know, <laughs> language. So, um, but yeah, so she's spending the whole entire time trying to like get up to Nick and stuff. So when she finally does, so this is a major scene. So yeah. when she finally goes to the party, whatever, mm -hmm. she gets out there. So one, Nick calls her before the party and was like, hey, Margo. No, he told his friends, he told her friends like, hey, Nick wants to talk to you. So Margo's like, oh my God, Nick wants to talk to me. Like, so she's getting all excited. And then Nick calls her and it's because he wanted her to bring some beer up to the party. So he was just basically trying to use her to get some beer supplies for the party. So what does Margo do? She steals it from the grocery store. Right. So you already stole money from your daddy. Now you're stealing beer from, from the grocery store. You, you didn't learn your lesson clearly from stealing and working at the grocery store. So right. she goes to the party and then things happen between her and Nick and then, then she Did like- they have sex? Yeah, they have sex. She lost her virginity to him. I guess it sex. was, I guess because she's an underage character, you know, you can't go into details, but it just, it sounded really weird. Oh, It didn't, it, it was, was not, it was not a happy, it was not a good sex. It thing. was not like point. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Because it just, it was not, maybe that's why it was written like that. Maybe it was supposed to be written to be uncomfortable because yeah. Margo was uncomfortable because that's not how she wanted to and lose. I think she said it hurt. Virginity what? and stuff yeah. on the beach to a boy that she thought she liked but didn't really yeah, like. But also in that scene, uh, Freddie oh, and Freddie Moses show up to the party. Somebody else shows really? up to the party from the neighborhood and Margo was like, Ah, she tried to keep her two worlds separate. She didn't want her white friends to know about her Latino friends. She didn't want her Latino friends to know about her white friends. She was trying to keep mm -hmm. the world separate and they collided and she wasn't ready for that. Not at she all. She wasn't. And it smacked her in the face. So I thought the book was really just the classic good girl turn bad to be cool kind of thing. Similar to like Mean Girl when Caddy Heron gets up with the plastics and oh, she was yeah. a good girl she then gets she, turned, converted. she gets converted, turns bad. And then she comes back to her senses at comes the end. That's what Margo did. Like, but I do appreciate, I didn't think Margo was like gonna reform at the end. And we don't even really know if she officially reformed, but she did. She's alluded. She's into lists. So she made a list of people that she needed to fix her relationships with. So she was fixing her relationship with her ex former best friend Elizabeth, Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. um, she was working on her relationship with Camille and um, Serena mm -hmm. and she was trying to be more honest with them and tell them like her brother's going to rehab her parents might be getting a divorce and just kind of being more herself with them mm -hmm. and then she talked to Moses at the end as well so I did appreciate that and it kind of you know, it's right before she goes back to school, so we don't know how she's gonna act when she gets, she gets back, back there. But mm -hmm. it alludes to the fact that, you know, she's gonna go back to being herself. Because her and Elizabeth used to post um, on this Instagram page they had, I think called Art is Fashion, or Fashion is Art. Wear, like wearable Art. There we go. I got you 80%. Um, I don't so, know why this <laughs> they had uh, this page and they used to just wear like vintage clothes and go mm -hmm. thrifting and stuff. Mm -hmm. But now that she was at Somerset, she was wearing like, trying to be wear trying to wear designer clothes and wasn't doing the stuff that she was comfortable with wearing trying to please these other people um but i think that she may not go back to that but she's just being more aware of herself and like how her actions affect people so i do think that by the end of the book she is educated because she um is less selfish and realizing that her actions affect others and she's learning to care about other people and then just care about how her how herself yeah care about herself and how she looks to other people so I wrote word for word it says Margot is very shallow and slightly entitled and though I empathize with her plight at the end I don't think there was any real growth in her character come on plight plight you know that word of the day um 
I said uh, she still felt the need to please Camille and Serena despite her changing life events. So like I know she was trying to like she did have a list. I think it was like the get really real list. So yeah. it was listing all the people that she wanted to reach out to and kind of be honest and open with them. But I think even when she was talking to Camille and Serena she was still trying to like. She had to check herself. She was still kind of like sugarcoating the events because she still wanted to present it in a good light to them. Mm -hmm. So she could still be held in their good graces. And I just felt like while she was trying to repair the relationship with Elizabeth and with Moses, I still think that when Margot goes back to school, I feel like she's gonna fall right back into if if there was a you know a sequel to the book, I feel like she would fall right back into who she was. But before. that's if she's able to go back because her parents lost one of the grocery stores. Oh yeah, parents lost one of the grocery and stores. And her daddy's staying with somebody else. Yeah, so she may not be able to go back because they may not be able to afford him. So she life may have just checked her. It's time to rate it. Rate the book. All right, so you know we have our rating scale. So we have sober, which means it wasn't all that. And then we have buzz. You know, you got you feel a little bit, you know, but it's just not you hitting got, the like, mark. You know, you are gonna leave the party. Yeah. Then you have tipsy. You're like okay, you have a good space. Mm -hmm. You know, this is where I need to be. I'm chilling right here. Yeah, my two and then you have lit. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you in the back of the video saying, mm -hmm. hey. Everybody about it. Boom, bop, swiggy. All right. So, are you gonna read first? I'll read first since okay. I read first last time. So, to be honest with you guys, I gave this book a buzz. Okay. I gave it. I literally put two flame emojis. Mm -hmm. um, I just didn't like the ending, to be honest. So, and then I and I actually text Kia this. I was like, I just don't care enough about Marcus' <laughs> teenage angst. Like, I but don't we cared about um care. But Theo. Was, so Theo's angst was different. Mm -hmm. Theo had and some real older, complicated yeah. things going on in her life. She was really mm -hmm. dealing with a lot. Margo was your like stereotypical, oh my god, I just want to be cool in high school. No one likes me. What well, is me? And I was just kind of tired of it. <laughs> and I think also, with it, and uh, no offense to the book, Lillian, I also think I'm just going to play. So, as Nike has explained, she likes young adult books. So, a lot of our characters are young. And I think I just, when this book came, I was like, I'm tired of reading about little kids. Where are the adults? They're not but, uh, <laughs> What's that? The, what's the book we read last time? The bells? That, the it bells. didn't feel kitty. They didn't. No, that one didn't feel kitty. No. So yeah. So like, I just, I don't know. So the the bells wasn't kitty. But for some reason, I just felt like this book. And I think also, unfortunately for me, I think we had hyped it up a little. Well, I had hyped it up because it was such a long struggle for it. Like you said, this is supposed to be the first book that we read. Mm -hmm. It took us a while to actually get to it. So I'm like, oh, this is about to be good. And then, I mean, not saying it wasn't good. It just, I don't know. Yeah. I just, it was buzzed. My rear rating. Right. I want us to have a different rating for a book once in a while, but <laughs> I gave it a buzz too. And I gave it a buzz because of the ending. Like, <laughs> so I like the ending, like how it just culminated with all the drama, like her finding Junior's drugs, the party in the Hampton, mm -hmm. Jasmine was pregnant by her dad, mm -hmm. catching him in the parking lot, and then like her kind of turning things around at the end. So that's what gave the book a buzz. If that hadn't happened at the end, I would have been sober. Mm. But I gave it a buzz because of that reason. And like you said, it is in comparison to the books we've read so far, mm -hmm. it is very. Um, it's just stereotypical. It's just, yeah, it is. Like I'm in high school and I want to be cool, kind of thing. Yeah. Which isn't a problem. Everybody goes through something like that when they're in high school and, and yeah. different things that they're struggling with. So I get it. It's just reading it in the way that it was just told and I think a lot of it is because it took a really long time for the main character to really come to grips and like I said I don't know if she really did yeah. if I was to meet Margot I feel like she would still be the same person I feel like I didn't really personally I personally didn't see any real growth in her yeah she wrote down this list and said that yeah I want to fix these relationships and I, she did make some steps to really do it but I still felt like if she was to go back to Somerset and was presented with an opportunity to be part of the Cool Clips Club and not hang out with Elizabeth or Moses she would jump at that opportunity and I don't know I just she was just she was really shallow and just really kind of rude and really entitled and I just didn't like her I think yeah, that's what I it was read, maybe I didn't like Marco <laughs> I read a lot of YA lit um so I took a class in it in college and this is probably just one of the most stereotypical YA could you just expect him to have like more drama than what she has going on mm -hmm. like the stuff in point was like really deep and really dealing with the issues. 
Um, and this is just very, like you said, shallow, surface level, not really dealing with anything. Yeah, you don't really come to grips with to understand why Marco's yeah. the way she is. She, she really has like no agency. Like she's really under the control of her parents. Like, right. They can. Uh and I just, what she does. I just understand that. It's like, okay, I wanted to better understand. So the other books I've here read, there's been some explanations as to why the main characters were the way that they were, the things mm -hmm. that they went through, the struggles. And there was really no reason. Margot came from a good family. She had great opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, I don't know. It just, I, it was buzzed again. Yeah. Almost a sober. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. My buzz. So That's it on Margo. Glad we got through that, but right. I'm excited about this next book. Yes. I've already started reading it. I it's, haven't started. Um, good. <laughs> so I haven't started reading it either. All right, y'all. I'm excited about this next book that we're reading. <laughs> it's my choice. You know, I chose this book. I'm really excited. Um, I was gonna choose this before the bells, but then I got the bells and I was like, ooh, I want to read this. Um. So this book, I think is actually based on a true story. I think, mm -hmm. I think, don't quote me, but you'll find out mm -hmm. when we do the review. Mm -hmm. And it's called Allegedly by Tiffany D. Jackson. And Tiffany went to Howard, uh, and she black. Well, that's the whole point of all the time. Um, so I'm excited about this, but I'm not gonna tell y'all what it's about because we're gonna save it for our review. I've mm -hmm. already started reading it. I'm not gonna tell Jazz what page I'm on. I haven't started it. I don't think I bought it yet. <laughs> I bought all my books on Kindle, so I need to buy it. My next book will be a Kindle book because it's Jazz's choice. No, it's not. That book is your choice. The next book is The Bells. And then we're doing my book. Well, either way, I gotta buy it. Oh, that's true. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm yeah, not sure. Okay. Anywho, so this is our next book. So y'all start reading with us. I think, let me see how many pages. Uh, so we got like 370. At 387. Oh, that's a quick read. Yeah. I'm just kidding. It may not be. So this is probably about as long as the bells. So it's probably a week. Yeah. Yeah, about a week. a week. We've been reading in about a week's time. Yeah. So EJ week. won't be here this week, so I'll probably get a lot of reading done. Because <laughs> he likes to have pillow talk. But yeah, that's our next book. I'm excited about it. I really wish that we had more, but the book that we just read is just, I'm sorry yeah, it's guys. probably gonna be our shortest video. It happens, you know? Yeah. And that's how you know that Black Girl Lit is real because we giving you the real about books. We're not gonna like every book. It's not every book is gonna and speak okay. to us. But I feel dope because it's only February. <sighs> We started this in February. Yes, we started. No, we started in January. Oh, the end of January. February What was our first book? I don't know. Point. Yeah. Oh yeah, we start, but we started at the end of January. So yeah. it's only been a month. It's February 27th, so like legit it's been a month. And we read three books. Three books. And we're on our fourth one already. Yeah. So, and my goal, just as a side note, so my goal was to read at least one book a month for the year. And look yeah. at that, knocking that out. Because reading is fun to men, so black uh -huh. girls are lit. Black girl lit to her. Black okay? girl lit is lit. Black we girl really lit, lit is real lit. And we read all that lit, so give us the lit. Cause we are lit. Hey. All right, y'all. That is it for the education of Margot Sanchez. Um, read allegedly with us. My mom says she wants to read with us. I told her we'd be reading in like a week. So Trina, I need you to be Come on, on it. Girl, read I'm gonna show you this book. So read and maybe you can read. Um, oh. Shout out to my coworker. She actually suggested oh. a book. We want my coworker watched her videos. So mm -hmm. shout out to you. You know who you are, girl. I'll and drink then, to that. And then she also suggested, she said her godmother wrote a book and yeah. suggested a book. So I will be in talk about that, I'll share that book with you. So and you if, know, I have one of my former classmates, she wrote a book. See? So I'm gonna support her and we're gonna read it. That's what I'm saying. So if you guys wrote a book, if you know of good books, please. She, and you can self-publish on Amazon, that's what she did. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. So provide us with those options. We wanna read, cause you know what? Reading is Ooh. fundamental, reading is lit. Black girls are lit and black and girls lit. It's lit picture. outside, the sun is coming out. It is a beautiful day, it's been kinda dreary. It's about to go down. <laughs> so, but at least it's out right now. So, um, with that being said, I wanna thank you again for watching us. So, um, thank you guys again for watching. Please make sure that you rate, comment, and subscribe, okay? Cause that's how we gonna get better. And make sure you comment. Cause yeah. we need to know how we can perfect our craft. Yeah. We can just improve. What books are you reading? Let us know. We may want to read it. Yes. Or we may have already read it. Cash app, okay? Cash app, me. Cause I need that moolah. I want to put that money. 
Mm. We need to put our Amazon wish list in the description box. Hey, so read that money. Me. Support us, okay? Okay. That's it today, y'all. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you come back for the next one. Of course, at the end, I'm gonna put our last two videos and we should have a blooper reel up coming soon, you know. But I'm gonna put up this review first because cause we just keep getting these reviews out like crazy. We pop them out like I'm crazy. I'm gonna save the blooper reel for when we don't have a review. We could just post. compile all the bloops together into one bloop video. <laughs> one bloop. bloop. Well, I already put the first one on YouTube. That's fine, just get some bloops. It. Just get our bloops. Yeah. So again, thank you guys. I hope you guys have a, a blessed day. I hope your day is lit. Okay, cause I hope it's black girl lit. Black girl lit. Uh, black girls are lit with lit hair. Yeah, we really black with this head wrap. Y'all see my Africa earrings? I, I ain't never done a head wrap like that. You must. All right, y'all. We'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.